Hey guys, it's Mallory here. I am super excited to share my birth story for baby number two, baby girl, baby river. She's making some noises over there, so I'm gonna be grabbing her, but I just want to let you know what my experience was like. It was very different from my first, so I will link that for you guys if you wanna check that out as well. If you're curious about um, what to expect for labor and delivery in a hospital and that kind of thing. Um, again, my two experiences were very different. So the first time I was induced uh, because of high blood pressure on my due date at my 40 week appointment, they just took me to the hospital. Well, we drove to the hospital and I got admitted and got induced. And then the second time with River, which is what I'm gonna be sharing today, it was a longer labor process. I had like early labor and I went into labor on my own, uh, which I really, really wanted that to happen. So I'm so glad that it did. Both my babies were born right around their due date. And um, yeah, I used the epidural for both. So um, there's some similarities, but a lot of differences. So let's just get into my birth story. This is baby River. Say hi. <laughs> she is six and a half weeks old now, so almost seven weeks. Um, but yeah, she was born March 30th, but my labor started March 28th. So it was a Monday night and I was having contractions. Um, I don't know if you consider that Braxton Hicks. I would say it was pretty real contractions, but just super light, super early labor. And I um, texted my mom because we needed my parents to come to uh, take care of my son, Asher. He w was 13 months at the time. I don't know if I'll be able to do this with her. <laughs> we'll see. So I texted my mom and they just decided through like, you know, a couple conversations that they were just gonna go ahead and come spend the night at our house because we all felt like it's probably gonna happen here pretty soon. <coughs> There are just going to be baby noises in the background. But um, all that to say, my parents decided to spend the night that night. I was having contractions. I was actually timing them. But then um, when I went to sleep, I decided to go to sleep around like 10. They probably started around 7. And I was able to sleep. I wasn't having like any pain or anything like that. Then Tuesday... Uh, the 39th, we had actually already had a an appointment scheduled, like a normal OBGYN appointment. It was my 40 week appointment. It was a couple days early, but um, we went in for my appointment. I was, maybe I was having some contraction that morning. I don't really think so. And when we went to my appointment, they checked my cervix for the first time and I was four centimeters dilated. So I was like, okay. What I was feeling was real, like, you know, obviously my body is very ready, like getting prepared, but you know, it could still be like a week out or it could be a couple days out, like who knows. Um, so went to that appointment and uh, came home. Luckily all the offices and the hospital and everything are pretty close to our house, but my parents um, were very helpful with Asher and everything during this whole time. And then, Later that day, so my appointment was that morning, I think at like 10 or 10.30. Later that day, around like one or two maybe, I was timing my contractions. They were closer together. I was feeling them um, and it was like actually kind of painful, like crampy feelings, um, which is what I remembered my contractions feeling like the first time. So again, since I was induced the first time, I really didn't know what to compare it to. It was almost like, you know, the, I was having a baby for the first time because I didn't know exactly what to expect or feel. Um, but I was crampy and so I was like, okay, I don't know, I was already forced to age dilated. Maybe we should just go in because I remember with my first birth, everything just going pretty quick. And they say with your second and so on um it just gets faster because your body already knows what it's doing or you know that's just typical i don't think that always happens but so we went into the hospital and it ended up being like a false alarm but um they were able to like they hooked me up 
and I was there for like an hour. They kind of have a waiting room, but like you're you're in your own room, but it's very small and they hook up the monitor stuff like to monitor the baby's heart ba heartbeat and um, contractions and that kind of thing. So I could see the contractions on there. They were actually happening, but they were probably around like five, six minutes apart and not painful. So um, the doctor on call or whoever was there um, told me, you know, you could stay and we could keep monitoring you. And if you make progress, like with your cervix dilating, then we can admit you to the hospital and you'll go into your room and everything. Or you could go home and come back when it's closer and when you're um, having more severe contractions. So since we live close, since we live close and everything we just decided to come home um, which I'm very glad I had always wanted to labor more at home but I just didn't know how quick my body would go into um, like I don't know the later parts of labor <laughs> whatever that's called so I decided to come home and um, we ended up just like the um, the contractions ended up kind of fizzing out like I didn't really feel them as much anymore so I wasn't even timing them they weren't very painful and what they had said at the hospital was you know that was kind of my baseline of okay now you know um, what it feels like to have these contractions and if it's more severe and you know really severe that's when you should be coming in and they should be probably like three minutes two to three minutes apart so I'm like, okay. I feel like there are just so many pauses in this video, but that is life with a newborn and toddler. He's not even a toddler. I just have to film while he's napping and so she happens to be awake right now. But anyways, so Tuesday night, um, they had kind of fizzed out. So we ended up going to Texas Roadhouse with my parents. We had dinner and hung out for a little while. And then when we were on our way back, we stopped by their house on the way to our house and contractions kind of started picking up again. I was kind of feeling something um, and it was a little bit more painful, but again, it's like crampy. It wasn't like anything severe. Um, so we got home and I was like, okay, maybe I'll like take a bath, try to sleep, whatever. I didn't end up taking a bath. I just took a shower and then we like went to bed and I was trying to go to sleep right after I fell asleep. I think I was like, it felt like I wasn't asleep for very long at all, but who knows the exact timing. Um, I woke up, like got out of bed um, because I had had some kind of painful contraction and then like I moved during it and it shot pain like up my back and um, kind of in my abdomen as well and so I think it almost just like scared me and made me feel like okay I think that was more severe I don't like that pain I don't know what's going on so I think we should just go back into the hospital and see what's going on so at this point it's kind of like middle of the night hospital hours um, but we make it there and go in get checked into the same kind of like waiting area room and i'm still only four centimeters dilated um but i think i was more effaced because you all, there's like that percentage um so it was like okay there could be progress your contractions are closer together we're just going to monitor it for like an hour and see okay so um we're at the hospital and they were just like keeping us in there for a little while. My contractions got way more severe and they were very close together. I think at this point it was like two minutes apart pretty consistently. Um, I was definitely really feeling the pain. I think like I was shaking my legs like the whole time to kind of make me feel better. I did not do a good job of being prepared with like breathing exercises or anything like that so whenever the nurses like this the entire labor experience whenever the nurses would remind me to like take deep breaths i felt so much better um so i do think you know especially if you're going natural but even not i think it is helpful to like have a doula or put in like some intentional time to know like breathing exercises and maybe have your husband help with that or whatever um or you know whoever is there to help you so 
Yes, all that to say, I got the experience I wanted. I got to feel all the contractions. My body went into labor on its own. And after being in that waiting area for what felt like a really long time to me because I'm just sitting in this smaller bed having contractions, we did finally get like actually admitted to the hospital. Um, as far as like the restrictions on guests and everything, I was able to have my husband and my mom. Um, so that was the same with Asher actually, um, which thank God, it was so nice to have my mom there, um, just, you know, for support. And when you're in pain, it's nice to have your mom around. Um, and then also she got so many awesome pictures and stuff for us. So it was always great having her there. Um, so she showed up around that time. We all went to the actual hospital room together and my contractions were just very close together, very painful, and I was very ready for the epidural at this point. Um, I knew that I was planning on getting the epidural. I had the epidural with Asher as well, and um, this epidural experience was a little bit different. They didn't have me, um, what did they do? So like with Asher, I had to sit on the bed, uh, cross-legged, and it was just like a longer experience, I think. And then this time, and, and like I had a hair net on, it was totally different. Um, and this time it was just like pretty quick, pretty easy. My mom had to leave the room, so that was kind of weird. <laughs> but when she came back, um, I had had the epidural. And so at that point, when you get the epidural, you can't really like get out of bed, you can't walk around. Um, they have to put a catheter in for you going to the bathroom and everything. So um, did that and everything was going well. I did, it took a little while for the epidural to completely kick in. Like it takes a while for it to spread through both sides. So I was still feeling contractions on my left side um, and it was still pretty painful, but I knew that it was gonna get better. And then also if you don't know the way epidurals work, at least the way both of mine have, is you have this little like button thing. It's like an IV basically that's hooked to your back. It's not just a shot, which I thought that's what it was. And that's what it was, I guess, when like I was born and when my mom and aunt and that generation um, gave birth, it was just a one shot. But this is like an IV that's hooked up to your back the whole time. And um, every, I think it's every 10 minutes or so, if you're still feeling more pain um then you can like press a button and it releases more and it won't even let you like press the button if you don't like you can't overdose on it or like do too much or whatever um so yes i did not click it nearly as much as the first time um but i did make sure that everything was evenly spread and that i was feeling good um and i wasn't in pain so I've always had really good epidural experiences and um, honestly, like I do recommend them if you're interested in that. But if you're interested in natural, I think that's amazing. I think our bodies were made to do this and um, it's really awesome either way. I hate when it feels like people are judgmental. Like if you do the hospital thing, I feel like there's been this huge shift to like back to natural and um like not doing epidural and that kind of thing and i just think it's sad like you know every mom is a, is a mom and should be able to like make that choice for themselves um without any kind of judgment same with you know breastfeeding versus formula fed like fed is best and yeah all this medicine is available to us now and um you know different studies show different things. So do your own research and make your decision based on what you feel like is best for you and your baby. That's what I'm gonna say about that. Um, but my epidural experience was great um, and I ended up getting the epidural around midnight. So it was like 12 something AM and then ended up having her just a couple hours later. So I didn't even have the epidural for long and um, I'm gonna turn around here. So it was crazy, just pretty quick. So we got to the hospital around like 10. My contractions were really picking up. We got admitted to our room. I got the epidural pretty quickly. Luckily the anesthesiologist was available to give me the epidural. And then um, just a couple hours later, I started really feeling the pressure. Um, they ended up breaking my water, which was totally different than my first experience. Um, my water broke on its own. And it's so weird when they break your water, like they just have this long thing that they use to focus, like a long stick, um, almost like a big, 
like huge toothpick um and when they broke it you just like feel the rush right away it's so crazy um and then just a little while later came in oh no A little while later they came back in and I started pushing and I only ended up pushing um, like a couple times it was a total of I think like less than 10 minutes um, like seven or eight minutes of pushing and she was out and it was just so crazy um, just how quick everything was with the epidural I was not feeling pain so that was great but I was able to again feel like the pressure there and know when um, you know I needed to let them know that it was time to go um, but they still you know coached me through pushing let me know like when the contraction was happening so I needed to push I think I did a couple like practice pushes um, but then the doctor and all the people came in and she um, was put up on my chest right away. I had brought a birth plan and talked with them about how my first experience was a little rough where I didn't get to just hold Asher right away. I didn't get to do skin to skin right away because he had um, swallowed a lot of fluid, sucked down a lot of fluid on the way out. And and had to like have deep suctioning and I really didn't want that to happen again. So they gave her to me right away and I was able to um, hold her. Uh, we did a little bit of a delayed cord clamping, only like a little over a minute. Um, and Nasheed, my husband, cut the cord. Um, they did end up taking her away from me for a little bit, um, which I really tried to avoid, but they thought that her breathing was a little distressed. Um, so that was really scary for me. I, I just really wanted breastfeeding and everything to go well. And in that moment, you know, breathing is obviously very important, crucial. So I really didn't want her to like have to be on oxygen or I just didn't know what was gonna happen. But luckily um, they gave her back to me and I feel like her being on my skin and right under me and feeling me breathing really helped her um so i was kind of annoyed you know that they even took her away at all and i kept asking for her back um but yeah it, it wasn't very long so it ended up being totally fine and about the 30 minute mark of her life she um was kind of acting like she was hungry she was doing the like pecking kind of around my chest and so i just showed her my nipple put her on and she like latched and started eating which was a totally different experience and i was so grateful and so happy because that was not the case the first time around i had so many breastfeeding issues um but she for the most part i you still have to figure it out and it's still kind of tough in the beginning but um for the most part she has been an eating champ yeah hi um and she's done really well so it was very good to um, experience that this time and just all the differences of not having to be induced and just everything I was so grateful for. Bless you. <laughs> um, then we switched to the like recovery room and we um, had a really good experience this time around. Like, bless you. She didn't have any kind of issues um, as far as like blood uh, not blood pressure, uh, blood sugar or anything like that. I didn't have any problems like with Asher. I had to be on oxygen. My blood pressure was all over the place and stuff. So this time was just really smooth. They were not in our room very much. We really just got to bond and spend time with her. It was the middle of the night for both of my births, which is kind of funny. She was born at 2.13 a.m. and Asher was born at 1.30 a.m. So that was kind of crazy. Um, sorry, I'm watching Asher on the monitor. This is life, <laughs> my two babies. It's like very consuming. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's basically all I wanted to share. Um, you know, that was my experience, that was my birth story. This time around, it was very different. It was really great. <laughs> and I am so happy to have my baby girl here. So I think that's going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching she's getting a little upset i think she's tired so we gotta go but 
definitely make sure to subscribe if you want to see more baby and motherhood content um i definitely post a lot of like day in the life videos now with two under two life is crazy but i'm really excited for um my kids to grow up together and be this close in age i think it's going to be awesome in the future right now it's a little tough but they're beautiful moments and i'd love to share them with you if you want to subscribe and follow along so uh thanks for watching again and i will see you next time bye